I love the Commonwealth Games. I think it's an incredible celebration of diversity and the power of sport. And I love the friendliness and the excitement of each and every competitor. Back breaking, hustling from sundown to sun up. Everybody wanna make moves right now. Wanna make moves right now. The Commonwealth Games of 2014, um, it was my first time at a major games, and, um, and it was my first time dealing with that pressure of expecting to win a medal at a major games. To wrestle in the final and to win a gold medal for Canada in front of thousands of fans and to bring that medal back to Canada, it was an incredible experience. I wasn't ever looking to win the Olympic Games. I was looking to go out there and compete my best. I didn't care if that meant winning or losing my first match or winning or losing the whole thing. The mindset has come through a lot of failures. In 2015, I was ranked number one in the world and I was winning every competition. It was our pre-Olympic tournament and I lost the Canadian National Championships. Eight months later, I had to qualify for the Team Canada wrestling spot. And so I had to do a lot of soul searching. And I think if I hadn't had that failure, if I hadn't had that, that loss, I wouldn't have been able to go into the Olympic season and um, have redefined success in the way that I do now. I got off the mats in Rio and I turned to my coach, Paul, and he's like, Erica, this is just the beginning. And you know, he's told me, he's like, well, the performance that I had in Rio was kind of just scratching the surface of what I was capable of. I was never defined by that, that winning, that gold medal. Um, I feel like I was defined by like, each day I put into that journey, and so I, was, I wasn't ready to stop that journey. It's very repetitive. I've been doing the same exact training program for eight years. <laughs> it's hard to think about like a long-term vision, um, major games every four years, but if you break it down to small daily, weekly goals, then it makes it go by, <laughs> it makes it much more um, realistic and much more, you know, less abstract. I started wrestling in grade nine. I fell in love with the sport instantly. But wrestling is like no other thing. It's, it's so physical, it's so technical, it's so tactical. There's a reason why we all wrestle like in our basements and we wrestle with our brothers and sisters. And, and to wrestle is to be human, I think. That to, the idea to struggle, to triumph. It's a very addictive sport. <laughs> the feeling of <laughs> putting on the line and the feeling of like the pain emotionally and physically of wrestling. <laughs> It's a, it's a addictive feeling, like you hate it, but you love it so much. I always had this mantra with my coach, Paul Ragusa, one takedown at a time. We're focused on you know, the first 30 seconds of that first match. And if I'm successful in those 30 seconds, or not successful, we move on to the next 30 seconds, and you go on from there. In the sport of wrestling, there's so many ways to win. You don't have to be the strongest. You don't have to be the most technical. You don't have to be the most tactical, but you have to go in there and you have to compete and you have to fight and you have to never give up. And I think those are things that translates across all of our lives. You know, you don't have to be the smartest person in the room, but you have to be in the room and you have to be your best self in the room. And that's all it takes to win a wrestling match and I think that's all it takes to win in life. That's all I got, I don't know, I'm tapped out.